Hey, everyone. Hi, I'm Ashok. Uh, I lead the autopilot team alongside Milan. God, it's coming so hard to top that optimist section. <laughs> um, we'll try nonetheless. Anyway, um, every Tesla that has been built over the last several years, we think has the hardware to make the car drive itself. We have been working on the software to add higher and higher levels of autonomy. This time around last year, we had roughly 2,000 cars driving our FSD beta software. Since then, we have significantly improved the software's robustness and capability uh, that we have now shipped it to 160,000 customers as of today. Thank you. This did not come for free. It came from the sweat and blood of the engineering team over the last one year. <laughs> um, for example, we trained 75,000 neural network models just last one year. That's roughly a model every eight minutes. Uh, that's you know, coming out of the team. And then we evaluate them on our large clusters. And then uh, we ship 281 of those models that actually improve the performance of the car. And this space of innovation is happening throughout the stack. The, the planning software, the infrastructure, the tools, even hiring, everything is progressing to the next level. The FSD beta software is quite capable of driving the car. It should be able to navigate from parking lot to parking lot, handling city street driving, stopping for traffic lights and stop signs, negotiating with objects at intersections, making turns, and so on. All of this comes from the uh, camera streams that go through our neural networks that run on the car itself. It's not coming back to the server or anything. It runs on the car and produces all the outputs uh, to form the world model around the car, and the planning software drives the car based on that. Today, we'll go into a lot of the components that make up the system. The occupancy network acts as the base geometry layer of the system. This is a multi-camera video neural network that, from the images, predicts the full physical occupancy of the world around the robot. So anything that's physically present trees, walls, buildings, cars, balls, what have you, it predicts, if it's physically present, it predicts them, along with their future motion. On top of this base level of geometry, we have more semantic layers. In order to navigate the roadways, we need the lanes, of course. But then the roadways have lots of different lanes, and they connect in all kinds of ways. So it's actually a really difficult problem for typical computer vision techniques to predict the set of lanes and their connectivities. So we reached all the way into language technologies and then pulled the state of the art from other domains and not just computer vision to make this task possible. For vehicles, we need their full kinematic state to control for them. All of this directly comes from neural networks. Video streams, raw video streams, come into the networks, go through a lot of processing, and then outputs the full kinematic state, the positions, velocities, acceleration, jerk, all of that directly comes out of the networks with minimal post-processing. That's really fascinating to me because how, how, how is this even possible? What world do we live in that this magic is possible that these networks predicts fourth derivatives of these positions when people thought we couldn't even detect these objects? My opinion is that it did not come for free. Uh, it, it required tons of data, so we had to build sophisticated auto-labeling systems that churn through raw sensor data, run a ton of offline compute on the servers. It can take a few hours, run expensive neural networks, distill the information into labels that train our in-car neural networks. On top of this, we also use our simulation system to synthetically create images, and since it's a simulation, we trivially have all the labels. All of this goes through a well-oiled data engine pipeline where we first train a baseline model with some data, ship it to the car, see what the failures are. And once we know the failures, we mine the fleet for the cases where it fails, provide the correct labels, and add the data to the training set. This process systematically fixes the issues. And we do this for every task that runs in the car. Yeah, and to train these new massive neural networks, this year, we expanded our training infrastructure by roughly 40 to 50%. So that sits us at about 14,000 GPUs today across multiple training clusters in the United States. 
Um, we also worked on our AI compiler, which now supports new uh, operations needed by those neural networks and map them to the, uh, the best of our underlying hardware resources. And our inference engine today is capable of distributing the execution of a single neural network across two independent system on chips, essentially two independent computers interconnected within the same full self-driving computer. And to make this possible, we had to keep a tight control on the end-to-end -end latency of this new system. So we deployed more advanced scheduling code across the full FSD platform. All of these neural networks running in the car together produce the vector space, which is again the model of the world around the robot or the car. And then the planning system operates on top of this, coming up with trajectories that avoid collisions or smooth, make progress towards the destination using a combination of model-based optimization uh, plus neural network uh, that helps optimize it to be really fast. Today, we are really excited to present progress on all of these areas. We have the engineering leads standing by to come in and explain these various blocks. And these power not just the car, but the same components also run on the Optimus robot that Milan showed earlier. With that, I welcome Parul to start talking about the planning section.